One of the most interesting things about Holy Scripture is what they call Bible prophecy. Prophecy of the end times, the last days. What does God say in Scripture about our future? We know that God knows our future. And God also tells us our future. Let's read Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It reads, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. God delights in showing you the future. He delights in showing you what he is about to do. One of these things that he has shown us is in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17 says this, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. He here is speaking of the devil. We know that in the book of Revelation, it also says that the devil deceives the whole world. Can you imagine being so good at deceiving people that you deceive the whole world? So another thing we see here is that John here, when he wrote the book of Revelation, he didn't quite see it very clearly. He he couldn't quite understand it. He said it's a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. It is the mark of the beast, or his name, or the number of his name. But one thing he makes very clear, and that is that you will not be able to buy or sell unless you have that mark. Now, I first started studying this scripture way back in 1991 when I first heard about it. And like me, I know many of you, you heard about the whole theory about it being a chip in the right hand, in this RFID chip. You just scan it at the supermarket and that chip would be basically used to buy and sell anything. Now, it sounds really good. It sounds feasible. And I believed that for many, many years. But in the light of what's going on in the world today, I now believe that the mark of the beast is actually invisible. I now believe that the mark of the beast ties right in very, very well with cancel culture. What is the mark of the beast? Is it a chip? Is it a visible mark on your right hand or on your forehead? Is it something so physical, so literal, so real worldish? You need to understand that the scriptures also talk about the opposite to the mark of the beast, and that is the mark of God. We read about it in Ezekiel chapter 9. So let's read Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 2, 3, and 4. Now in context here, Ezekiel is speaking about a vision that he had. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's inkhorn at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. Now, a few things here we need to realize. That is, number one, it talks about men. But in this context, in this visionary context, it's actually angels. There are many times throughout the scriptures that angels appeared like men. Remember Abraham, when the three angels came to him, and they were actually men. Lot his nephew, in the in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels of God came down to Lot, they appeared as men. They were men. 
Another clue that we know that Ezekiel is talking about an angel here is that this man is clothed with linen. Now we read in Daniel chapter 10 about a vision of a great and mighty angel, like the Son of God. And he too was like a man clothed in linen. Also, in Revelation chapter 15, we also read very explicitly that these angels are clothed with linen. So in the context of the whole entirety of Scripture, we know here that Ezekiel is talking about angels. These angels, for the most part, are invisible. So we have invisible spiritual entities here that are writing on people's foreheads, putting a mark on their forehead. It's not the mark of the beast. It's the mark of God. And this mark of God is given to those who cry and sigh over the abominations of the land. Those people who are very vexed with the sins that are committed are given the mark. Now, having said that, is it too much to assume that the mark of the beast is the opposite? It is a mark that is given on the foreheads of those who do not cry and sigh over the abominations in the land. A mark given to those who are not vexed over the abominable sins in the land. A mark given to those who, God forbid, even promote the abominations in the land. And much like the mark of God, the mark of the beast would also be invisible, given by spiritual entities, something that the human eye, the natural human eye, could not see. And if that is the case, we see this happening right now before our very eyes in what they call cancel culture. If you do not agree with the narrative, if you go against the narrative, if you refuse to go with the flow, then they will target your business. They will do everything they can to cancel you so that you would not be able to do business, so that you would not be able to buy and sell. Now think about this for a minute. If the mark of the beast is indeed a microchip or some other material thing or something visible, well, not everybody is going to be receiving it because a lot of people believe that the mark is going to be a chip or some other visible mark. But it would be easy for the devil to deceive people to receive a mark that's invisible, a mark given to the businesses and to the people who accept the abominations, who even go with the flow, or God forbid, even promote it. Therefore, that would make this prophecy about the mark of the beast easy to fulfill today. Don't go with the flow. Resist the devil. Resist sin. Don't go with the world. Go with God.